the same right number. They add here the same thing. That's the tribulation period, seven years. And the middle is the three and a half year period. It all matches up. It's a prophetic thread that runs from Hanukkah, this nice little dreidel holiday, that's really, it's really radical because it, it's having the exact things of the book of Revelation. So if you want to understand Revelation, if you want to understand what's coming, you need to understand Hanukkah. If you want to understand the end times, unlock Hanukkah. Because we are in the end times, it is coming, it is crucial, and since we have the plan book here, let's open it to see the strategy and to see what, the, what happened, actually, what they dealt with, and you're going to see it's going to match up with what we are dealing with. All sorts of things have been said about 2012, most of it off the wall. But nevertheless, we know we are living in dramatic times, we are watching things happen, and these will be dramatic times, and we need to be strong in it. This sets the stage. What is the stage of Hanukkah? What's the setting? If it was a play, what's the setting? The setting is an evil is overtaking the land. A new morality is overtaking the land, and is seeking to eradicate the, the morality that had been and faith in God. And it is imposed from above, but many go along with it. And we see this evil in the, in the story of the account of Hanukkah seeks to make people abandon God. It declare, ultimately declares war on believers. We see persecution. A man named Antiochus Epiphanes, God manifests. We see at the temple. All this is Hanukkah, and this is the revelation that matches up with not only the book of Revelation, but matches up with what's happening now. It reveals here, you know, in the book of Revelation, it speaks of something, and also in Hanukkah, it speaks of something. And so we look, Hanukkah says this. It says that Antiochus made a decision that began this whole thing. He said he wanted all of his kingdom, all the peoples he took over, to become one people, one kingdom, or one, like, world thing. And everybody was to become part of this one world thing here. What do you read in Revelation? It speaks, it talks about an, a time when the entire world will be as one. A one world kingdom, a one world state, super, superpower. The Bible gives a spiritual name for it, calls it Babylon as the chief city of it, or the chief spirit of it. What is Babylon? It, says, it talks about Babylon the Great. Babylon is the, only the Greek way of saying something that you all know. Same exact word. You just don't realize it's the same word. It's the same word as Babel. That's it. Babel, as in the Tower of Babel. Many students of Bible prophecy see Europe as very significant in this. Why? Because the Bible says that in the end times, it also says that this one world empire in some way, is linked to Rome, the Roman Empire. It says that. How do we know that? Well, I just gave you a verse. It's the people, the prince that will come will destroy the city. That's one. Another one is, it speaks in Revelation about the city of the seven hills. That's Rome. And in another way, it says in Daniel, it, says, it speaks about the fourth kingdom, and it talks about different things that happen and the ten things that happen. At the, end. the fourth kingdom is clearly Rome. And that, so therefore, in some way, Rome... There's going to be a revival of what is Rome, spiritually called Babylon because of the spirit of it. But so what is Rome? What is this thing? Why Europe? Europe is the heir of Rome. Literally, it was a good part of the Roman Empire. It was the western part, which was the center part with the capital. And the Bible speaks that in the end of the age, there will be some kind of union or confederacy of powers. And the nations of Europe have never come together in order for them, this to happen, they have to come together. They've never come together until now, in our lifetime. Actually, it's linked to the rebirth of Israel. That's when it began. But it's only increased to form one super Europe. And interesting, for those watching the news, the world economy, if you noticed, has been hanging on the balance over Europe and its union and over the euro and the nations of Europe. And people say, well, it could all fall apart. Well, something else can happen, too. There are increased calls because of this crisis for Europe to respond and unify even more deeply, to unify all of its financial policies, fiscal policies, to say, well, this will never happen again. 
saying that the lack of being united has caused this crisis. When the European Union produced symbols of its union, one of the symbols it shows, well, it, it shows actually two interesting symbols. One symbol we mentioned years past, but one symbol it shows was that of a woman riding a beast, which is interesting. It comes from actually the myth of Europe, that Europe got its name based on an ancient myth about a woman named Europa, who actually, who was seduced by a god, who was Zeus, the same god of, 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 of Hanukkah, which represent, which links up with the Antichrist and everything else, and, and she ends up be riding away with Zeus, the, the beast, the, as a, in the form of a bull or a beast. It's interesting because it speaks about a civilization that, or a person who is seduced and turns to something who's a beast and a false god. That's Europe. That's how it gets a thing. And the symbol of a woman riding a beast is not a great thing to have because of the revelation speaks of a woman riding a beast at the end. Linked to the same thing. But the other image they chose...